And welcome back to the Destination Gettysburg Podcast. I'm Rick Hennis here, and it's getting a lot nicer outside. Uh, maybe the groundhog was right. We'll find out. Um, but no matter what time of year you're listening to this, it's always a great time to take a town tour here in Gettysburg. And we have the man <laughs> here with us today to talk about that. How are you doing, Brad? I'm doing fine. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, Rick. Absolutely. We're thrilled to have you. Uh, he's with the Gettysburg Licensed Town Guides. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit deeper here in a little bit, the word licensed. Yes. Um, but nonetheless, just want to welcome you to the podcast today. Thank you. And uh, if you could, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how long you've been doing this. Okay. Well, that's the hard part. The yeah. rest is going to be easy. Um so I have a doctorate in zoology. I was, I was in higher education for 40 years. I uh, retired as president of the College of Southern Maryland. I'd been president for 17 years at two colleges. Always had an, history, an interest in history. Um, and a- after we retired, my wife and I decided to move up to the Gettysburg area, um, partly because it's just a beautiful place and partly because it's so you know bound in history. There's so much here that we decided... You know, who wants to go down to the Carolinas and Florida anyway, like like normal people do? We wanted to retire here, although it's amazing how many people do retire here from other mm-hmm. climates. Um, and so I spend time as a retiree giving town tours. I'm a Gettysburg licensed town guide, as you mentioned, Rick. I'm also an Antietam uh, certified battlefield guide, and I've written 19 books on the Civil War. So I'm more of a military historian, although my doctorate is in zoology, but I have a passion for history. Mm. And so uh, I spend the year writing, um, giving tours, and whatever tours my wife is asking me to do, I'm, I'm trying to be nice there as well. <laughs> Excellent. And that's, that's uh, what I was alluding to earlier, uh, licensed. This isn't just some run-of-the-mill tour uh, that people can get of the town of Gettysburg, you know a good deal. 19 books. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a big number. It is. I never thought mm-hmm. I would get to that number. Um, I have two more coming out this year, apparently. And mm-hmm. my goal before I croak is to at least <laughs> fill up one bookshelf okay. with my books. I'm getting there. I'm thinking maybe I should broaden my horizons and say I'm going to fill up two bookshelves and that way I can live maybe longer mm-hmm. than one bookshelf, but who knows? But just, you know, it's just, uh, it's a passion of mine. You could set your goals a little light and go to the um, children's store mm-hmm. and buy a very small bookshelf. <laughs> and then yes. that way, you, you know, you can still <laughs> say you filled up, you could fill up four or five bookshelves uh, if you want. I like that idea. <laughs> there you go. Kind of, kind of a little cheating, but nonetheless. It works. What's your, um, the... The put you on a spot here, the most popular book that you put out there? Probably the two. I do a lot of map books. Okay. And uh, my map, map books are unique. People who are listening who may be familiar with me mm-hmm. uh, may be familiar with my maps of Gettysburg. Uh, it was the first in the series where there are about 135 or 40 full-color maps, and on the facing page of each map is a description of what's happening at that particular time. And I've done First Bull Run, I've done Antietam, I've done um, Fredericksburg, the Wilderness, Spotsylvania. My goal is to do every campaign in the Eastern Theater of the Civil War, and I'm getting pretty close. That has been, uh, so Maps of Gettysburg has been probably the most popular. Mm-hmm. But another one that's been very popular and, and one that Linda likes, my wife, is uh, the, ma- the Brigades of Gettysburg. And I'm always um, thrilled to hear uh, people telling me that rangers use it at, at the battlefield, um, guides will use it. I use it all the time as a reference. Mm-hmm. It's about 700 pages. And I'm saying, how did I ever write this thing? Uh, but, um, but it's a great resource. I think those mm-hmm. are the two most popular. I'd like to say, you know, it's like if you ask, Rick, who is your favorite child? <laughs> you, you know, I'll plead the fifth. Right? Is, that, is that the right one? The fifth, I think it is? <laughs> yes. Okay. And so, you know, I love all my books. Mm-hmm. But if you ask about the most popular, it's probably those two are the okay. most popular. I've sold the most copies. Excellent. And then translating this into the, um, 
the tours you give on a regular basis uh-huh. um, with the licensed town guides. Yes, it's a it's a great place uh, for anybody to begin when they come to Gettysburg. Oh, uh, absolutely! It's just it's just one of those things where there's a there's uh, I've talked about before in other episodes. There's a multitude of ways you can you know take in the history. Right. Um, you can you know whether it's walking, uh, uh, biking, uh, bus, whatever Seg- the case. Segways. Segways. Sure. Um, those are still happening and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but to have somebody actually guide you yes. around to show you the points of interest mm-hmm. and, the, and the landmarks and so forth right. with the stories, oh yes, with the validation of, of you knowing your stuff, mm-hmm. um, that can go a long way. And it's, yes. it's a relatively inexpensive it is. Um, process. It is. You know, um, Destination Gettysburg. I know. Mm-hmm. I know. I don't have to tell you this. Rick has a walking tour guide. Yes. yes so you do. can, you know, you can pick this up. It's free, and you mm-hmm. can walk around town, and you can read it. And then when you're standing in front of a building, but it's not the same. It's sterile. Yes. It's not the same as you have a guide who's mm-hmm. there with you, and not saying, "Well, look, here's one building. Here's another building, mm-hmm. etc." But telling you stories about what happened here, who lived here. Uh, what the impact was of mm-hmm. these individuals. Uh, and it's not just about the battle. Um, many people think, well, Gettysburg is only about the battle. Mm-hmm. But we talk about the founding, James Gettys. We talk about Eisenhower. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talk about so many different aspects, the African-American experience mm-hmm. uh, in Gettysburg. And the sites, I mean, most people have never seen Penelope. Mm. They may be driving through, they may come every year and they drive through Gettysburg on Baltimore Street, and they never see Penelope. Mm. They never see this marker in front of the Jenny Wade birth house that is a historic marker that shows that it, it says 50, I think it's 57 uh, M to B. Okay. 57 miles to Baltimore. And it's it's historic. And and But it doesn't just jump out and say, hey, look at me. Mm-hmm. Penelope's a cannon that is embedded in the concrete. And it's got a story. So you could say, okay, well, that's Penelope. Let's keep walking. No, Penel- you want to hear the story about Penelope. And even, you know, the, the newest um, monument in the town of Gettysburg is Thaddeus Stevens' statue. Yes, I was just going to ask about that, right? Yes. And I love that statue mm-hmm. because he has such a, an important story and such a fascinating mm-hmm. story about how he's bold, how he's, um, you know, he has a club foot what he did to get the 13th, 14th Amendment passed. I mean, the stories about just him, mm-hmm. I could probably spend a lot of time, but, you know, we'll spend maybe five minutes there, and we keep walking because there's so much to see in Gettysburg. That, that's what's so exciting. And the nice thing is it's, it's always open. Yes. So, and, and, I, and I point that out because there's advantages to both sides of the story be, between, you know, having you as a town guide Right. And then having somebody with that freedom of self guide. Yeah. So basically, the way I would look at it, if mm-hmm. I were if I were coming to town mm-hmm. and I were looking for my first experience in Gettysburg, what I would do is I would call you up. Yes. I would go to your website. Right. Schedule a town guide, mm-hmm. and then you know along the way I'm picking up like all these little rabbit holes. You can fall down, mm-hmm. um, yes. topically speaking, like whether it's you're talking about the Thaddeus Stevens statue or Penelope or whatever the case may be. Right. Then after that, spend a day or two and just kind of just peruse, wander around, pr- wander on my own. Yes, that kind of thing. Of and course, you can do that yes. obviously anytime. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's where you can kind of marry the two definitely and get the full experience. Sure. Because at the end of the day, it's it's one of those things where. The internet is great, mm-hmm. but you really don't get your Gettysburg inspiration until you stand right here. That's correct. And see it for yourself. No question about it. Yes. And that's that's something that, that you really bring to us. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're just proud of time and time again. Yeah. And 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 on that note, not to do too into the details here, mm-hmm. um, but I can't stress enough. That it's not somebody with, you know, like you go online and you fill out a questionnaire and you say, I want to be a guide, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, you know your stuff. We talked about this a little bit ago. Yes. But what is the process on a, on a big scale, like, you know, bird's eye view, what's the process like Mm 
mm-hmm. for somebody to become a town guide? Thank you, Rick. That, that's a great question. <clears throat> I should tell you that we are 20 years old now. Okay. So we have longevity. We have about 15 guides. Uh, recently, there's been a number of, I won't say competitors, but colleagues sure. who, have, who have sprung up and provide town tours, and they're very different. Mm-hmm. For us, one, we believe in quality versus quantity. Mm-hmm. So you'll see us, in fact, this happens all the time, where uh, I'll meet with a couple, you know, man and woman, they're married, it might be a child, might be a dog, and mm-hmm. they'll say, well, where's everybody else? And I'll say, this is just, this is just us. Mm-hmm. Rather than 20 people, you know, and I won't say anything negative about the evening sure, sure. activities sure, after sure. dark, where you can have a large group. Yep, yep. So it's very much personalized. That's number one. Um, number two... The process, uh, the others, it's it's more, it's more what you indicated. You know, mm-hmm. do you have a little interest in history? We have uniforms. We're licensed by the by mm-hmm. the um, by the borough, but also it's a very intense process to become licensed to be a, a Gettysburg licensed town mm-hmm. guide. Um, we have an examination, a written exam that lasts probably two to three hours. Mm-hmm. It's very intense. It's about 150 to 200 questions. Uh, it is not um, multiple guess. It is usually um, fill-ins, so you really have to know your stuff. Mm-hmm. And how many people do we know who really know their stuff, but they can't really relate it to others? So if, any, so if a person gets a 90%, and by the way, the vast majority of individuals do not succeed mm-hmm. in the written exam, they get under 90%. If they've, they've, if they've achieved a 90% or higher, then they go to the next stage. And the next stage is an oral exam. It's basically a 90-minute town tour. Okay. Where they take the evaluators out on a town tour and show them what they would do in a regular tour. And we have the opportunity to sit down with them and say, okay, this was great. This is okay. Mm-hmm. You really need to work on this. Um, and the reality is most people never pass on the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, they have to do it again, but they get this valuable feedback. And what we're looking for, as, as we talked about, we want storytellers. Right. We want people who not only have a passion for history, but know how to tell stories and mm-hmm. can relate it to people, who can answer questions, who make eye contact, um, and are personable. You know, how many times have we dealt with somebody Oh, they're dead, you know, dreadfully yep. boring. Deadpan, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Sure. We yeah. don't want that. That's exactly what I was thinking about as you're describing this process, because you can have somebody who checks all those boxes, knows their stuff, mm-hmm. knows all the historical aspects and whatnot, but can they speak it in a way where it's like, you know, you have to have that public speaking experience. Right. You have to have that uh, personability. Yes. Um that that kind of ability just to be able to look people in the eye right. and relate with people mm-hmm. in a non-condescending way. Definitely. And be able to welcome mm-hmm. questions and answer questions. You know, there, there are people who sometimes feel threatened. Mm-hmm. If uh, they're almost, well, you know, you're questioning me. No, they're, they're, they're interested. Mm-hmm. And so we're looking for people that really like other people, that, um, that, can, that love history and love Gettysburg. You mm-hmm. got to love Gettysburg. And as you were mentioning, Rick, it's not just, it's nice weather now. Here sure. it is, um, you know, in this, it'll be in the 60s today. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it's March, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but but we do this year round. Mm-hmm. So if you want to come in January and it's 12 degrees, I mean, we, we have guides <laughs> who will do it, like me. I will say they do take tips. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Uh, and also, if it's mm-hmm. if it's hot, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's ninety degrees, and people might say, "Oh, I don't know." Sure. And it's fine if they don't want to do the tour, but we'll have guides who will be on duty to uh, to take people around. So so we're not weather dependent. Mm-hmm. We've had we've had actually tours during a snowstorm, believe okay. it or not, not an ice storm, but a snowstorm, because people who have come from afar. Mm-hmm. And they're not coming back. They're saying, oh, but we really want to see Gettysburg. And so we're able to find a guide who can say, yeah, I'm available, and I will, I'd love to do it. Great. Yeah. And, not, and again, not to put you on the spot, um, but you know, obviously you have 20 guides, as you say right now? About 15 or so. About 15 or so? Okay. Getting toward 20, though. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to throw this out there. The next generation of guides yes, and what that might look like. Um, I, I try to remain positive. I, I don't have a hand too much in, in the school curriculum these days um, yeah. and, and what, what is being taught and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to say this in a roundabout way, but the interest going forward in more people becoming guides down the road, what do you think that looks like going forward? What's interesting, most people who Mm -hmm. are interested in becoming a guide are retired. Okay. Or close to becoming retired, and they're they're looking for the next stage in their life. Okay. Um, But we do have individuals who are working, working Mm -hmm. full-time, but they're in middle age for the most part, and they are more limited in terms of their flexibility, in terms of when they can give tours. Quite frankly... There's there's been one person who's contacted me. I think he's in his thirties. Okay, who's interested? Most people, it's it's usually when they're a little bit older, mm-hmm. you know, middle age or, or beyond, that have started to express an interest in becoming a town guide. Okay, yeah, they've got a lot of you know, uh, whether they're retirees or so forth. They've got a maybe a lot of time to take in the material That's and right. so forth, but and to give tours. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife doesn't usually see me during the tour season very often. <laughs> We're not as busy, obviously, uh-huh. as the battlefield guides. Uh, it used to be that we would have be have shifts like the battlefield guides do, mm-hmm. and we would be there, you know, from ten to three. And we realize there aren't enough walk-ins to make that realistic. So, but we can we can turn on a dime. So, if you say if it's eight o'clock in the morning, oh, I'd love to take a town tour at ten mm-hmm. this morning. Mm-hmm. We can accommodate you. I think that's the key, um, that it's not so rigid that you fit our schedule. Right. For us, it's what do you want? How can we do, you know, satisfy your needs? And we do, you know, we do have um, different types of tours. Mm -hmm. We have 90-minute tours, which are the bread and butter. We have uh, 60-minute tours, especially in the evening, which are shorter. Um, They're interesting, but... You know, if you really if you really want to get a sense of the town, you need to take a ninety minute tour. And then we have it's fascinating. We have scout tours, and uh, because the local um, council, mm-hmm. it's not a merit badge; it is a patch. But you can come to Gettysburg, and there's a Johnny Reb tour, and there's a um, Billy Yank tour, and there's the town portion. And if they complete all of these aspects, they can get a patch from the local council. The reality is um, the scoutmaster can do it, you know, and it's that kind of thing where you stand in front of the, um, the Jenny Wade house and you read and they read, you know, this is what happened here. Or you can have a town guide for three. I mean, what's nice there is it, you, they run about three hours or dragging these kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm all energized. I'm excited. We've got these 12, 13-year-old kids who are dragging themselves along after three hours. But, you know, but stopping and telling stories and 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 it's economical. I mean, mm-hmm. when we have um, t- these scouts, it's 11 bucks for three hours per kid. And the adults, um, school groups, if they want to take, and we get a lot of school groups, um, it's six dollars per child for an hour. I mean, how do you beat that? You can't. You can't. Now, I don't want pe- to to think people to think that it's that inexpensive for everyone. Mm-hmm. But our most expensive tour, our ninety minute tours, are twenty five dollars. But you are, you know, it's for the most part, it's just you and your spouse right. or your friend, you know, or it could be your family. Uh, very seldom do we have a, a big group, you know, for a ninety minute tour. Mm-hmm. And when you think about it, $25 right now is not that much no. for personalized. Uh, and as I mentioned before, um, we realize that it's gotten tight with inflation. And mm-hmm. so we've held our prices stable uh, this year. And we raised them a little bit last year. And we hope to continue to keep our prices as moderate as possible. Absolutely. And I would never compare ourselves with Disney World. Um, but, but along those lines anyway... There's been a trend uh, with people going on vacation a lot mm-hmm. that they they are focused on being in the present and 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 mindful vacations, and this is a prime example of how you can take care of that. 
right. um, you can you can enjoy yourself for as little as twenty five dollars or whatever it mm-hmm. is, um, and, and really walk away. And no pun intended. Walk away with something that is everlasting. Oh yes, um, a, a good memory, Very rather so. than you know spending money on material things mm-hmm. and so forth. Mm-hmm. But again, not not to compare to Disney World. But in the grand scheme of things, whether it's Disney or or the beach or wherever else it is, right, it's peanuts at the end of the day. Oh yes, that people that you can spend here in Gettysburg to really take something everlasting with mm-hmm. you. Very much so. And you know, uh, mm-hmm. if someone is budget minded, we have uh, shorter tours for adults. It's ten. It's uh, it's for it's twenty dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, children. If you have a student, it's uh, ten bucks mm-hmm. for ninety minutes or for sixty minutes. So you know, we, we're mindful. Sure. And for us, we want to tell the story. It's not about making money. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife will tell you that um, I never say, "Hey, Linda, look how much I've made." As much as wow, I had such a great experience with, the, right. with this group of people, and that's why all of us do it. We don't do it for the money. We do it mm-hmm. because, and none of us do it full time. You know, I might have maybe a couple tours a week. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's the interaction. And Linda always tells me I can. You know, during the summer, she said I can tell you haven't given any tours for a while because you're awful grumpy. <laughs> you need that interaction. You need that that you know that that ability to tell stories. Yep, and and some of those stories translate into uh, reviews online. Definitely. Like when I, whenever I'm poking around online and looking at this and that. I'll come across somebody saying, "Oh, I love my tour with the town guides. Probably yes. did a great job." And yeah. and uh, they'll put in like their two cents about their experience, right. and and it's that kind of personal ability, you know, personal uh, reviews mm-hmm. that that really speak volumes. I agree. I agree. Um, with, with you were talking about, you know, like Penelope or whatever the case may be earlier, mm-hmm. um, whether it's a, a special kind of tour or a, an aspect of of your tours on a regular basis, is there a part of uh, the town history that you really love to tell the story about? There is one person mm-hmm. that I, I love the story, and we actually know um, this person's great, 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 great granddaughter. Okay. Uh, her name is Sally Myers. Not, not the, not mm-hmm. the, although her first name is Sally. Um, but this was a woman who lived on High Street. Okay. And hated the sight of blood. Mm-hmm. It sickened her. And will give of herself to go into the Catholic Church, which was a gigantic Union mm-hmm. hospital, about 250 young men who were the worst time of their life, obviously. Right, right. And um, she will go into the St. Um, you know, Francis Xavier Church, mm-hmm. and despite the fact that she is suffering, she will minister to these men and ultimately marries the brother of one of the men who dies in her care. He was hmm. terminally uh, wounded anyway. And so we can sit in front of the church, mm-hmm. and I can tell the story about how she sat on the steps and cried her eyes out, and how she went back in. We pass her door where she actually lived, and, mm-hmm. you know, it was half a block. And I'll ask people, how would you feel? You know, you've just seen wounded men and wounded mm-hmm. horse, and you're physically ill. You run down your basement, and the next day, July 2nd, there's a knock on the door, Medical personnel asking, we're desperate. We need people to help feed these young men and mm-hmm. and hold their hands as they die and write letters home. Will you come and help? And how it must have, that, that half block walk that we walk must have felt like hours mm-hmm. for someone who's dreading that experience. And, you know, so she's an inspiration. And then we walk a little bit further and there's the library. And most people don't realize that that became part Essentially, the White House when when Eisenhower was uh, yeah. when he had his heart attack, yep. and he would kick out the um, the postmaster from his office and use that office up to transact, you know, responsibility as president. And you know, I can I can show them this is where the car pulled up. See those those steps in the door. Uh, Eisenhower walked up there and talk about that, and it's like, whoa! I just thought it was a library. Hmm. Or the or the Presbyterian Church right across the street about Eisenhower worship there about Lincoln coming there about he didn't worship it was a political rally and about John Burns and we bring in about the battle the the the, the fighting in the streets how horrible it must have been 
And one of the ways, one of the things that I like to start off every tour with is uh, after we introduce the town and, you know, how it was founded, we walk over on York Street to um, uh, the ice cream shop that's right on York Street okay. next to the upper crust. And I show them the shell embedded in the, in the masonry. And I talk about how every person who lived in Gettysburg had to make a decision. Mm. Do I stay or do I leave? And many of them left before Lee's army came to town, but many stayed. And I asked them, what would you do? You know, would you stay or would you leave? You mm -hmm. know, you don't know if they're coming, but, but you see them getting, those campfires getting closer and closer every day. What would you do? Or Tilly Pierce. You know, her family sent her away mm -hmm. to protect her um, before on July 1st before Confederates occupied the town. What would you do? You know, and it's, I, I want people to feel the angst. It, the, I don't want them to be spectators. Right, right. I want them to feel what it must have been like to be in your cellar and looking out on, on the evening of July 1st when all these Union troops are running through the town being mm -hmm. pursued by Confederates and seeing men getting uh, bayoneted and shot and, mm -hmm. and falling to the ground right in front of their very eyes and the horror mm -hmm. they must have felt. I mean, the, the stories are endless. Standing there with your children. Yes, very yes. much so. You know, deciding you're going to stay mm -hmm. and then um, finding out that mm, maybe it wasn't such a great decision. And how it must have felt when six to 7,000 Confederate troops are in mm -hmm. the town. And even though they're not accosting anyone, you're, you don't want to leave your house. But you may have a sick child or you may, na may need mm -hmm. medicine. And then what do you do? And, you know, there's stories about someone who needed um, milk for a, a sick, I think it was a sick father. Mm -hmm. and, and going out and, and very cautiously, you know, milking a cow she knew was going to be in the area. And then as she's coming back, all these Confederate soldiers saying, oh, what do you got in there? And each of them taking a ladle full. And by the time she gets home, she did get home safely. But there's very little milk left in that pail for her loved one. Mm. I mean, the stories, in fact, my, my, one of my biggest dilemmas is which stories to tell and which stories to, to leave out. And I love the scout tours because three hours, I can mm -hmm. tell all kinds of stories. <laughs> Whether the kids want to hear all of them or mm -hmm. not, I want to tell them because it's just fascinating. There's always a, a, a group around me mm -hmm. that are just sitting, you know, just standing there watching, loving every minute of it. And then you have the cool kids who are in the mm -hmm. back saying, ah, eh, not right, so right, much. Right, right. And I'll never forget the time where I said, okay, this is going to be a last stop. And one young man said, oh, mm. I said, what's wrong? He says, I don't want it to end. I thought, wow. Well, there you that go. That is the biggest tip I ever got. Yes. It's better than a financial tip. It's better than a Google review. That's correct. That's that's where, yes. where it happens. And my hope is that's the future for mm -hmm. us. You know, these young people who are really interested will continue the cause and, yes. and um, you know, spread that delight to others. Beautiful. Well, I can't thank you enough mm -hmm. um, for joining me here today. Um, before we uh, uh, say goodbye and whatnot, just want to let uh, everybody know where they can find you online, if you wouldn't mind. And, of course, we'll, we'll put this in the show notes so people yes. can click the link and so forth. Um, but for those listening, um, where, what is your website or your phone number? or how, What's the, the best way to get a hold of you? The easiest is um, to Google us okay. on Gettysburg Licensed Town Guides. We'll okay. come right up. And let me, if I could, Rick, just to mention, mm -hmm. uh, the bread and butter is the town tour. Okay. But we offer a whole host of others, seldom seen, and uh, the Southern End Tour, a lot of fighting in the streets, mm -hmm. an African-American tour. We've got in the evening a town tour, a battle in the streets tour, a Lincoln tour. Okay. You know, um, so there's, what, what, what I love is when we have people saying, oh, that was great. I'm going to do another one. And maybe, mm -hmm. and we've had people during their visit coming to, coming to do two or three tours, mm -hmm. you know, because they're all different. And so it's not just a one horse pony. Awesome. So yeah, definitely that in, that website is filled with information, and also you can book a tour right on that site. And Excellent. if you have questions, you can either do it there mm -hmm. or or call someone, and they'll we have a person right there who's a guide who can answer your questions. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. pleasure, pleasure talking with you today. Thank you, Rick. I you do it. appreciate it as well. Thank you for listening to the Destination Gettysburg podcast. Produced and hosted by Rick Kennis, with thanks to our special guest. No part of this material may be reproduced without written permission. 
Get inspired for your visit to Adams County, Pennsylvania at DestinationGettysburg.com. <laughs> <laughs>